I am honored and delighted to formally announce the inclusion of Old Swedes Church in the First State Historic National Park. Old Swedes Church has a unique story to tell in the history of the Swedes and the Finns in America, the great state of Delaware, and in the Episcopal Church. When visitors tour these grounds, they are linked with that past. On the doors of the church is the work of idle soldiers who were billeted here on our grounds and they pass the time waiting for battle by carving their initials into the wood. If you step into the pulpit of the church and rest your hands on that wood, you will rest your hands on the same wood that has been worn away by the sweat of preachers trying to find words of comfort and encouragement for the people. But Old Swedes Church is not a monument to the past only. It is a vibrant living place. On these grounds, we host an annual Easter egg hunt for this community. The amphitheater over there hosts concerts, and we still turn the soil, as we will on Saturday, to commit ashes to the ground as we commend souls to heaven. And always on Sunday, there is worship. We have been entrusted to be stewards of a vital piece of America's past and present, and we are so very grateful to have a partner in preserving that. Together with the Park Service, we can ensure that more Delawareans, more Americans, and more citizens of all country have access to that history. When they visit, they can see and touch the past and spark their curiosity to ask the question, who was C.G.? Did he survive the war? And as they stroll the grounds, they can walk the very earth that their Swedish and Finnish ancestors trod. I want to personally thank Senator Carper for all his hard work in making this happen. I want to thank also the Standing Committee of the Episcopal Church in Delaware and Bishop Wright for agreeing to this easement, and for Superintendent McKinley and your staff for making this happen as well. And because they do not teach easement document drafting in seminary, I must thank Lisa Goodman and her staff at Young, Conway, Stargate, and Taylor. They took ordinary language and perfected it, and we are grateful to them. So I'm going to turn it over to Bishop right now for a few comments. Right. Good morning. Good morning. What a wonderful and really special day. You know, in, uh, in the epistle to the Corinthians, uh, Paul the Apostle makes the, I think, the wonderful statement uh, that you and I are the fulfillment of the hope of all those who have gone before us. And when we go back and think now, over 300 uh, years ago, uh, when those heroic men and women got on those tiny sailing ships and came here to the edge of the settled European world and established a colony here, that they brought with them their faith, their values, and their love of community. And they built this beautiful church, which through the years has symbolized and lived out that faith of generosity, of compassion, of hope, and of justice, a living community that has thrived over these 300 years. How wonderful uh, that that heritage, that legacy, should be enshrined and commemorated today as we inaugurate this new national park. Uh, Senator, we are so grateful to you, our other elected representatives, councilmen, uh, for being here with us today for your ceaseless work and advocacy on our behalf as a community, uh, Patty Downing, and for your leadership, the lay leaders here at Trinity Parish, Old Swedes, uh, for bringing us to this really happy day. I'm honored, grateful to be part of a day that none of us uh, will forget, but to remember also that we carry forward now this light of hope uh, into the future uh, that we receive today and will now share with others. So Senator, uh, 
thank you for being with us uh, for your ceaseless work on behalf of our community. You do. Absolutely. You're next. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Looking good. I'm a day late, but uh, for those of you who are, are moms or love moms, uh, uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, it's one of my favorite days of the year, and I hope, I hope yours as, as, as well. Bishop, uh, Pastor, uh, how, if you know if you're going to be a superintendent of the, uh, like the, the national park in, the, in, this, in, in this country that celebrates early colonial uh, uh, settlements and uh, living, leading up to the uh, ratification of the Constitution, wouldn't you want to have that superintendent named Ethan McKinley? I mean, is that a great name? For, is that a great name for a superintendent? It's not his real name. It's Boris. What is it? No, no. <laughs> yeah, it was great to be with Rob. Nice to see. Uh, nice to see you here. Uh, I have not been in this neighborhood since. Where was it, Robin? Yesterday. Yesterday, uh, yesterday and we we uh, went. One of my, my wife's favorite things to go to the Hotel Dupont Green Room. And to have uh, Mother's Day uh, a brunch with our boys who were both in from out of town and, and uh, some other family friends. And uh, I left there $380 less. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that was a lot of money. <laughs> but we had a great time. We had a great time. And uh, we came here. We came, we drove right by here. We went down to the Calmar Nicholas shipyard. And we had all the kind, there was, actually, they were just starting to warm it up. It was, uh, they're going to have a, a big open house and celebration around. Uh, one, we got through between 12 and 12.30, and so they, were, they didn't have a place open yet. They let us in, and we had a chance to be on the ship again. My wife, uh, and Rob will remember this, is a member of our Roof on Development Corporation, the, uh, the construction of the uh, replica of the Calmer Nickel wasn't going so good until uh, we decided we are going to do, uh, do the riverfront. And uh, an idea of the Calmer Nickel shipyard, you know, that's when the Calmer Nickel, uh, Let's do this. Let's do this as part of the Riverfront. Rob's been on the Riverfront Development Corporation board forever. And some of you have been involved in it as well. But we had a huge celebration yesterday and loved every second of it. And happy to be here with, uh, with all of you uh, to, to today. Uh, I want to go back, um, oh gosh, a dozen or so years. I was, trying to take, I was a new senator, taking the train up from uh, Washington, got off the train station and was invited to come down and, and speak to the Greater Wilmington Convention Visitors Bureau to our annual meeting and they invited me to be their keynote speaker and I was happy to do it and I spoke for a little bit about tourism and how important that was for our state and then we did a Q&A and somebody asked the question, why don't we have a national park? It's a question, why don't we have a national park? And I explained how Joe Biden tried to, to get us a national park down in the Great Cypress Swamp, down in the southeastern part of Sussex County. Unfortunately, it was in a hunting area where a bunch of Sussex County hunters liked to hunt. And uh, the idea of having a national park in their, uh, in their hunting grounds was not of uh, their liking. And I, I always say that they, 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 they ran uh, Joe out of there with their guns and everything <laughs> placing. That's an exaggeration. But it, that idea did not get a warm, uh, a warm uh, welcome. Anyway, I told him that story that day. And I said, uh, you asked a good question. Let's, uh, let's see if we can go to work on it. And we did. I had no idea it would take this long. But uh, not many national parks have uh, been created in the last half dozen or so years, so uh, it's taken, uh, taken longer than we ever anticipated. I just want to thank uh, Mike Castle, who was a congressman, who was a huge help in the House of Representatives. I want to thank uh, John Carney, our at-large congressman now, who's been a huge help in moving the legislation and, uh, and getting uh, included part of a, a package. I want to thank Joe Biden. I want to thank uh, Ted Kaufman. Uh, I want to thank certainly Chris Coons for being my wingman. On, uh, on, this, on this project in the, the U.S. Senate. I want to thank some people uh, that uh, you may have heard of, maybe not, a guy named Dirk Kempthorne, Dirk Kempthorne, Secretary of the Interior, former U.S. Senator, former Governor of Idaho, to Idaho. huge help during the uh, last part of the, the Bush administration getting the National Park Service to, to take serious this, uh, this idea. I want to thank his successor, Ken Salazar, who is a, a fairly new senator, and the uh, and former colleague of mine in the U.S. Senate became Secretary of the Interior. And he came to see me. We talked about the National Park in 2009. He's a good, dear friend. And he said to me these words, I would walk to hell and back to get a national park for my friend Tom Carpenter. I said, that's a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought, we're going to get this done. God, thank you. This is good. And he pushed really hard to, uh, to push the National Park Service and to push uh, uh, a new president, 
uh, along with Joe Biden, to push uh, Barack Obama to uh, to saying, well, maybe uh, they're not ready. We're not getting legislation to create a national park, but maybe we can, um, through executive action by the president, create a national monument, and that would include a whole lot of different uh, pieces of uh, this idea in the national uh, monument. We had a limited uh, amount of time to actually. Uh, get everything kind of signed off and included in the, the National Monument idea. And this part, this piece of the, the uh, because it's an important piece of the uh, of our history, did not get included. Did not get included. And I said a little to the President, Vice President at that day, we'll be back. And we'll be back and, uh, and we'll try to reopen the National Monument and, and get some other pieces included, including, I think, the John Dickinson uh, plantation, I think, including the uh, Rivers Holt house, uh, house down in, in, in Lewis, and uh, which didn't make it in either. But, God was on our side, and we had a chance, we had an opening last uh, fall to include in the uh, defense bill, of all places, the defense bill, the, uh, uh, the uh, national park idea, our national park idea. People said to me, what is in it about defense? And I said, have you ever seen a replica of the Columbia Nicola? has four cannons. <laughs> four cannons. And, and I told him a story of uh, Louis Delaware, how settled by all uh, the... Uh, it was Dutch all those years ago, and one year later, they all wiped out. So, you know, we need others that would suggest a defense. And, and, uh, and then the, the Brits that came in and they uh, burned little, you know, I mean, they literally burned Lewis to the ground. And uh, in a tug of war between the Brits and the Dutch, and there was one house standing, one house standing, and it's the Rivers Holt House, one of the longest standing houses in, uh, in North America. This is the maybe, I think, the longest continuously operating place of worship in North America and the, the, uh, the longest serving pulpit. I mean, it's incredible history. We got down in the south of Dover Air Force Base, the place where John Dickinson grew up, the penman of the revolution who incited the, col uh, the colonies to, to rise up against the tyranny of the British throne. The, uh, here were the first, the first uh, Swedes and Finns came to, uh, to America and landed and, and uh, named the river after the child queen. The queen of uh, Sweden was about eight years old. And uh, they were looking for a place that didn't have a sales tax. And he said, <laughs> this, I bet they don't have one here. And uh, I'm talking with some of the Indians, and he said, never had it, never will. And so they said, this could be a, this could be a, good, uh, a good place for, uh, for that. And built uh, uh, Fort Christina, and they said, uh, let's call this the colony of, uh, of New Sweden. And uh, that was just part of what, uh, what's going on here. Down the road a little ways, down the river a little ways. Uh, William Penn didn't come uh, to uh, this America through Penn's Landing in Philadelphia. He came to America through Newcastle, Delaware. He, and that's why there's that big church right outside of Newcastle Presbyterian Church, and close to the Episcopal Church. There's a big statue, life, bigger than life statue of William Penn bringing the, 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 the documents that created Pennsylvania and Delaware, then one, until uh, December, I don't know, June 16th, 1776, something like that, when Delaware gave Pennsylvania its independence. And, uh, and, <laughs> We separated. We let them go free. They done, I think, pretty good. And then, uh, famously, we, uh, we have any runners here? Do we have any runners here? Have anybody here who runs the Caesar Riding Half Marathon? I've run it a few times. And uh, we started Rodney Square. We finished up at, uh, at Rodney Square. And they, uh, I run it 33 times, and they let me be the, uh, the honorary chairman for a long, long time. So I, I lead off the race. And at the beginning of the race, we're on King Street. 1,200 people chanting, Caesar, Rodney, Caesar, Rodney, and everybody takes off, and I'm always the last one to start the race, and I, then I try to pass people, and I, I got to the finish line uh, two years ago, and I passed a few people, and I'm standing there shaking hands with people who are coming across after me, and this one guy said to me, I just want to know, I have one question, I said, what's that question? He said, did you know Caesar Rodney? <laughs> and I said, I can't say I knew Caesar Rodney, but I spoke to his son's graduation. <laughs> and besides, I just beat you, buddy. <laughs> I said his hand. So, but to think uh, the, the, the Green were down to Green uh, in Dover the, uh, on Saturday night to celebrate the, the Biggs Museum and all that's going on there. They're like the cornerstone of, of the, uh, the, 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 the National Park piece in, in, in Dover. We had Caesar Rodney riding by there on his horse to go up and cast a tie breaking vote in favor of the Declaration of Independence and then famously at the Golden Fleece Tavern. 25 or so white guys drinking hot chocolate for three days, read that constitution, that newly drafted constitution, and said after day one, we're not ready. Day two, we're not ready. After day three, they said, let's ratify this baby. And they did, and we became, for one whole week, Delaware became the whole United States of America. The whole United States of America. We opened it up, we let in Pennsylvania, we let in Maryland, we let in New Jersey. I think for the most part, 
book the upgrade. Well, I have some concerns about Texas right now. <laughs> Parts of Texas. <laughs> Parts of their delegation. But, well, we'll get through. We'll get through all of that. We have for a long time. What did Churchill used to say about democracy? The worst form of government devised by word of man, except for all the rest. Think about that. When you think, think that we're on the wrong path, just remember that. Well, we're on the right path now. And uh, I love the, the, the fact that the, the longest continuously operating serving uh, church in uh, North America is now part of, uh, of our national park. It's part of a terrific story. And I'll close with this thought. We had a really funny guy as a witness, Bishop, uh, a month or so ago to, uh, to testify. And uh, on, I think it was cybersecurity, on a homeland security kind of deal. And he was testifying, and I, I said to him, I said, would you just talk to us about your guiding values and principles and stuff like that, and the kind of guiding you're thinking? And he's a, he's a professor at George Mason University, very funny guy. And he said, I'm for knowledge. I'm against ignorance. That's what he said. I'm for knowledge. I'm against ignorance. And I thought, boy, that'd be a great bumper sticker. But uh, we're for knowledge. We want the people uh, of the world to know what happened in this place 200, 300, 377 years ago. We want the people of the world to know what happened. There are more Swedish Americans than our Swedes in Sweden. Isn't that amazing? And we want uh, the people of this country to know what happened in this place that we call Delaware. And we want the people of Delaware to know what happened in this place called Delaware. More people coming as tourists to the United States uh, this summer, this year, are coming to see our national parks than any other attraction or series of attractions. And uh, when they go to the website, whether they're in Sweden or Finland or I don't care where they are, in uh, Japan or Malaysia, and they're looking uh, for a, a place to visit in the United States, and they go to the national park website, and they will see that there's a new national park. It's a different kind of national park. It tells a great story. It's story worth telling. And we know that you know, we say, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, we've got a great story and we're going to stick to it and bring it to the rest of the world. Uh, Councilman, nice to be with you, Anifa. And uh, thank you all for joining us and God bless you. Thank you. Now, who's, who's next? Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. Love Ethan. And uh, he's, uh, it's his job is to help and really make sure that we tell the story and to help pull these pieces together, including a beautiful piece of land up on the Pennsylvania, the other Pennsylvania line. Uh, Ethan, thank you for, for joining us here and for doing, taking on this responsibility. Thank, thank you, sir. So I had to follow his act on Saturday night as well, and it's always a tough one to follow. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it brief. Um, we are grateful as the National Park Service, as First State National Historical Park, to be here today. Uh, here with Old Sweets Church, uh, here at uh, the oldest continually operating congregation in the country. There's a tremendous amount of history here, and it's been extremely well preserved, and that's no mistake. Uh, it has remarkable stewards, and what they've done here over the last 300 years to preserve this place so that we can help preserve it today is remarkable. So I'd like to give a hand uh, to Old Swedes Church for the stewardship that they've done today. None of us would be here if it weren't for that. So, thank you. Uh, Old Swedes Church represents an invaluable piece of Delaware and American history. It's from our roots that we can trace religious freedom in this country, and there are a few better representatives of that religious freedom than this church. European colonies brought with them their religions, and over time, as they formed into the United States, there at the Green in Dover, where they decided to sign on to the Constitution, they decided that their European roots were no longer as relevant as their new American nationalism. And that American nationalism called for religious freedom. So here we are at the oldest continually operating congregation in the United States to celebrate that fact to celebrate Delaware's history as part of United States history, and along with six other sites to establish a new national historical park. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your participation. And I believe we're gonna move over to this document. And with this signing, Old Swedes Church will become part of First State National Historical Park.
brought my lucky pen. Really Can you go witness? Sure. No. Yes. Come on. Some leafers here, and then if you would stamp this, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you.